The biggest bit of advice I have for you, I titled this How to Play the Fiddle. <clears throat> all, well, all, all, the, all the while, I need another cup of coffee, knowing that I clickbaited you into this. I'm not going to tell you how to play the fiddle. I'm going to give you some pieces of advice. The first one is, if only for a few lessons, in the beginning, learn right, get that muscle memory down, go to a violin teacher. You can certainly, like I'm going to grab my other one because it's tuned different, cross key. You can certainly learn how to play it, and I'm going to hold it wrong. This is the way I learned teaching myself pinching a frog, you know. You know, I'm holding the bow wrong. I learned not using a shoulder rest, which I don't have on this one. I'm supporting it with this hand, but you can get fiddle sound. Fiddle sounds doing it wrong. But I'm finding now, after way too many years, teaching myself to hold it right and get the right movements. <clears throat> screwing up because my right hand my wrist is fighting my elbow because I didn't take a few lessons in the beginning now notes different tone different level of instruments $79 a little bit more and you can have fun with these things certainly um, but you know the best way to get a good solid quality violin that will last you a while buy used um, for example, I had a Char, Char Instruments, Franz Hoffmann concert violin, which was gorgeous. It had a one-piece back and solid. It doesn't mean no plywood in this thing. One-piece, highly figured back. This is figuring. See the, like, the stripes in it? Beautiful, medium, fine-grained spruce top. It was set up by Char. The bridge was in the right spot. The bridge was cut correctly. The sound post, there's a sound post in there. Good one. And just 20 minutes ago, I typed in, I Googled, Franz Hoffman concert violin used and found one for $249. And it came with a case and possibly a bow, a decent workable bow that Char would have sold. $249. None of this Amazon, eBay, Ship directly from the factory to your hands without going through it and checking it, putting good strings, setting the sound post, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you do happen, like I do, to have bought a $79 Mandini, this is better than the $100 one I bought 40 years ago. I tripped myself up because I tuned it different. This is GDGD. Um, but... It's not horrible, but the sound of a good violin. Yeah, you can tell the difference. But getting back to it, step one. It's possible that your cheap violin um, doesn't have the... I'm not even going to get into fitting the bridge and making sure it sits cleanly. I'm just going to do the cursory... I look at the sound post, you'll never see it on this video, but you look inside this hole, underneath this side of the bridge, there's a post that, joint, that is jammed gently between the top and the bottom. If that is not set in relation to the bridge correctly, it's gonna injure the tone. And so what I did, I estimated the thickness of the top. The sound post in this cheap violin is glued in, so I can't adjust it. So I'm cheating. I took the bridge and I slid it so that back of this bridge right here is one violin thickness in front of the front edge of, front edge of the sound post. The sound post is actually 
I don't have a pencil here, like right, right here. You need to have a little bit of room. Can't be right on top. It needs to be a little bit of room so there's a little bit of violin magic happening. Now again, I couldn't move the sound post, but I was perfectly able to move the bridge, maintaining perpendicularity between this, the back of the violin and the bridge. This needs to be 90 degrees. And it remarkably changed the tone. The other thing is the strings. Everyone will say, how do you make a cheap violin sound better? Get good strings. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is no straight line between cheap strings and great strings. It's not a straight line. It's actually a square and it has like direct, subtle, warm, brilliant. And you pick your strings based on the character of the violin and what you want it to sound like. The best you can hope for is this isn't going to make your ears bleed. So my advice to you, go to Shar Violin String Chart and don't get brilliant, get warm. You have to go up the scale of good strings you have to go toward the warm side because if you put strings that are brilliant, even if they're three dollar signs, that's the symbol for super expensive. If they're brilliant, they're going to take a cheap violin and make your ears bleed. You have to get better strings like they'll have one dollar sign, two dollar signs, three dollar signs to rate the price. Settle with two dollar sign strings. They'll be good, but go to the warm side and then pick from that array of strings. Avoid like the plague the $2 sign strings that are on the brilliant side because they'll make an overly brilliant violin really sound horribly brilliant. What else is that? I think I mentioned the Franz Hoffman violin. Buy used, go to Fiddler Shop or Char, whatever, see their upper student violins and then go to the internets, the interwebs and type that in, type in used and you can usually get them for less than half the price. And they'll probably come with a decent bow, too, because those student packages will come with a good bow. Is the bow important? Yes, it is. This piece of wood here has to have the correct placement of that bend. You see there's a curve in it. It's not curved, so the bottom of the curve is in the middle. It's towards the end. Technical stuff. It also has to have the right stiffness. It also has to have the right weight and balance. And it also... You're not going to get this with the really cheap bows and the mid-range bows. The really good ones, they will vibrate better. These pieces of simple wood, it's like, well, it's a stick and a piece, chunk of hair. Why does it cost so much? Because that wood actually vibrates, and it's part of this system. The better this vibrates, the better this system vibrates. play it. I've said enough.